Jake, former Browns coach Hugh Jackson has added his voice to this conversation. What did he have to say? Yeah, Dan, I spoke to the executive director of his foundation, Kimberly Deemer, this morning and texted a message with uh, uh, Hugh Jackson as well later on in the day. And basically, uh, they said that something similar happened with the Browns, that, that Hugh was paid to lose games in 2016 and in 2017. Those seasons resulted in back-to-back -back number one overall picks that the Browns made, selecting Miles Garrett and Baker Mayfield. Um, they didn't really offer many specifics about a dollar amount or you know how this uh, transaction may, may have gone down, but uh, according to Demer, he told me that, that everything she has stated is well documented and has been presented uh, to the league, um, and she added that this, this type of behavior, uh, referencing the Flores uh, accusation, did exist, and she said it compounds the dis discrimination that black coaches face in the league. Thank you, Jake. You can hear from Hugh Jackson tonight on the 6 p.m. Sports Center here on ESPN. Jeff, uh, your reaction to this discussion about uh, tanking games? Yeah, man, if these accusations are true, this is as disrespectful as it gets to the game. And I think what, what Coach Flores said is so, is so true when he talks about it's, it's not just him. It's his support staff, all the assistant, I mean, all the assistant coaches. They get labeled as teams, as coaches who can't find a way to win. All the players, by the way, when coaches get fired, players get fired. Families get moved on both the player side and on the coaching side. So when you're talking about that I have so much respect for him saying listen I'm not going to do it it doesn't matter I can't go back in there and look at those men knowing we're not putting forth the best effort we can do to win by the way players sacrifice their in you know most of their lives in how we eat how we train how we study all of those different things to get to this level and every week that you go out there on Sunday you're putting a performance on for the 31 other teams it's a job interview for those 31 teams because you know it's not for long in the NFL so when you have owners who are acting like this is no big deal, just tank it, we're going to get this draft pick, who, by the way, is a 20% chance of being really good, and that you're willing to tank everybody else for a year or two to get that, could not be more disrespectful to the game. Correctly that Hugh Jackson accepted the money to tank, or they offered the money for him to tank? I think what, uh, what Jake Trotter told us was that uh, he was offered the money to tank. I, again, we'll hear more from Hugh Jackson tonight on the 6 o'clock Sports Center directly from him. But uh, curious, Key, what your reaction is on, uh, on hearing all of this? Well, I think it's, if, number one, it's disgusting, okay? Us as football players and those guys that coach us, we're in the game to win, yep. no matter what the situation is. We're not in the game to tank to worry about the next draft pick <laughs> or who you think is going to help the team. This is not the National Basketball Association. This is not the NBA. One guy in the National Football League is certainly not going to, all of a sudden, you draft him and you go to the Super Bowl. This is, it, it doesn't work like that in football. So tanking to get a better draft pick, are we sure that's why they were tanking or thinking about tanking? Or was there some other little underlying things going on? You got to be very careful with this thing because we assume it was all about the draft picks, but I'm sure there'll be more out there as time goes on. As you say, this story continues to develop. Of course, as you might expect, the Dolphins uh, denying that accusation in a statement they released yesterday. Pleased to be joined now by Robert Griffin III. Uh, Robert, your thoughts on all the, this discussion about the Dolphins and the Browns and, and, and losing games on purpose and all this? Yeah, you know, we knew that there was going to be more information that came out. I just don't know if anybody expected Hugh Jackson to come out today and say that he was offered money and or took money. I, don't, I know there's a little uh, uncertainty about what that was, but, you know, if he, if he took money for, for losing games for years upon years, that's, you know, he went 1-31. in 31. That's a lot of money for all those losses. And I just so happen to be a player who played on that 2016 Cleveland Browns team. And I vividly remember right before we got to the regular season, they cut a slew 
slew of veterans that were going to help us win games that knew how to be pros. And we went into that season with the most rookies, I believe, ever on the active roster in, in, in NFL history. So when you talk about the work that guys put in, uh, if Hugh Jackson was offered that or that was the plan there in Cleveland for that year, I'm a guy that was adversely affected by that. And, uh, you know, it kind of throws me for a loop because I knew we were going to be talking about Brian Flores. But in this situation, we're talking about things that are impacting people's lives. Flores said he would never take that money. Uh, he would never do that because he, it's about the integrity of the game. And as everybody on the panel has already stated, the integrity of the game, these guys, guys like myself, we're, we're putting everything we possibly can into it. The weightlifting, the, the nutrition, the studying. And for a coach or an owner to say, you know what, we don't care about that. We don't care about your career. We care about draft picks or something else down the line is beyond disgusting uh, and very infuriating. Yeah, I mean, guys, you know, having played in the league, like what, when you're thinking about, you know, a season and going through a season, you're thinking about the draft. Like, I mean, is that at all in your mind? Like where, where, yeah. where the team is going to be picking the Listen, draft? I, I was, I was, with the year that Peyton Manning got injured, we were 2-14. and 14. We had just come off a Super Bowl, and now we're 2-14. and 14. It was a brutal season. Never one time. In fact, I used to tell people it was one of my most prideful seasons. I fought my tail off. I got everybody around me to play as hard as we could. We did not win many games, but by God, we went out there and laid it on the line, and I watched guys around me get better. Did we need Peyton Manning to be good? <laughs> Absolutely. We didn't have him. It didn't work out. But, man, everybody else on that roster, man, they fought their butt off, and that's what it's about. Like that, I have never met a player nor a coach who I would ever look at and they would say oh yeah we're not gonna we're gonna mail it in like that's just not ingrained in you, you you've been built from from somebody from small playing little league football all the way up man it, you ain't mailing it in it's about it's about the guys you're playing beside and helping benefit all of them and you realize how fast this career happens and that this might be the, that person's last one you dang sure ain't gonna quit on somebody that's just that's like I said man it's freaking terrible Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.